it's good to be here once again and this is your program point blank on kwod court tv right it is good to have you join us on this all interesting edition of the program because today we'll be talking on something that are, that is affecting all of us we'll be talking about politics one person a very good uh, 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 person one man said one thing and I later on had to believe in that saying he said politics started even from the church and so even in our homes we play politics and so we have been a part of this system and there is no way this can be removed from each and every one of us my name is Kola Olaleye and I'm happy to have you join us today on Point Black. <music> Right. On the program today, we'll be taking a look at the just concluded party primaries in Nigeria. Don't forget that we heard about 91 political parties registered by INEC. That's from the statistics released by INEC. So, INEC gave a deadline of the 7th of October for the submission, I mean, for the conclusion of the various party primaries and this uh, we witnessed in Nigeria today we want to learn from the exercise today we want to do an x-ray of the just concluded party primaries in Nigeria we want to learn from it and uh, to allow this to be a lesson a lesson to guide us towards the 2019 general elections to do justice to this issue on point blank today i have a candidate for the Ogun state house of assembly representing abeokuta south uh, abeokuta south to constituency under the alliance for new nigeria ann a political party and uh, we have mr olari waju solomon enilo lubo as our guest on Point Blank today. Permit me to therefore welcome our guest to the studio, Mr. Nilo Lubo. Thank you very much. Nice to have you on the <clears> show today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Okay. Now, uh, without too much waste of our time, I think we should set sail. Yeah. You were a player in the just concluded party primaries. Mm -hmm. How would you describe that exercise? Um, for me, the exercise was, was really good. Um, it was my first experience. I am mm. never a politician. Mm -hmm. um, but having seen what is going on in the country, we thought it is high time young and objective people get involved. And getting involved, we can see what politics is ab about. Um, it's a game of interest. Um, some are parochial interest, while very few of them are very national interest. But what we've seen so far is the, the party primaries have, some of them end up um, inconclusive. Some of them also keep postponing and postponing um, every time till they could get it. Even up to now, there are issues in some uh, big parties. Uh. Um, but while some of them had it good, um, we saw vote buying in some presidential primaries. I was actually um, coming to vote buying yeah, because that has become an issue in uh, uh, Nigeria. Exactly. Mm. In some other presidential primaries, we saw bogus figures. Uh. I mean, presidential primaries declaring 14 million votes. Um, Especially, um, there's, a, there's an analysis in Ocean. Um, APC polled 255,000 mm. votes in Ocean. Right. But when it comes to presidential primaries, they polled more than 500,000 votes. Right. Then you're going to look at where were these 500,000 APC supporters and who did they vote for um, during the state governorship election. So, so many things came up in the primaries. Um, in, the, in the end, at least we saw democracy at work, um, different interests. And different outcomes. You mentioned about uh, vote buying. Uh, this, to a large extent, you know, in, in our polity in the yeah. nation, some 12, 10 years back, mm -hmm. or, you know, we never had it this uh, terrible. But in the recent time, particularly uh, as regards to this uh, just completed primaries, yeah. that's when it became a thing, you know, that uh, was all flying around yeah. about uh, vote buying. Is it to say that this menace? 
has come to stay in our politics. No, we should not come to stay, really, because it's a bad omen for our politics. Um, democracy is about the will. Um, when you willingly give um, a leader your, your mandate to lead you for the for four years, and so that's what democracy should be about. So, but when you have to buy your way through that, when you have to pay your through your nose through that, then it's no longer democracy. It's no longer government by the people for the people. It's no because you have to pay for it. You have to buy it. You have to do voters' inducement. You have to do a vote buying to, to do that. And so it is a very bad thing for our democracy. All the international observers had very, um, not, they were not very good about They were not very happy about it. And so you will see INEC doing a whole lot to ensure that during the Osho elections, there were not a lot of vote buying. But I'm not sure if INEC had to do anything in the um, primaries. Because in one of the big primaries that happened a few days ago, we had they were buying... The first bidder, they started from $1,000, according to newspaper reports. Um, it got to $5,000. It got to $9,000. 9, yes. And so, which means you are a delegate in, in that primary. You are going with $9,000 is about 3.1 million era. Now, where did those money come from? Did they come from the hard-working people who are running from office? And they are given each delegate They're about almost, approximately 4,000 delegates. Its delegate is getting close to nine thousand um, dollars, about three point one million era. And so, if we have to continue like this, then good people will not get to office. Hard working people who are sweating for their money will not get to office because you are a technocrat. You've you've gone to university, you make your money, and you just do it hard like that. Five thousand dollars, nine thousand dollars. Those money, you. That's why you will see that most of this money do not come from honest people because no honest person would dole out their money like that so vote buying should not have a place in our politics it would discourage young people from participating in politics it would discourage righteous people from participating in politics and it will give it will leave politics for the rogues for the for, for the corrupt huh. but i think we have um, uh, a model yeah is it the way it is done in america does it mean that um, at elections People, candidates, don't spend money. Of course they spend money. Um, Barack Obama raised a lot of money. Um, even Donald Trump raised a lot of money. Mm. But what do they spend their money on? They spend their money buying ads on TVs, on okay. radios, on newspapers. Okay. They spend their money uh, raising volunteers and you know supporting their volunteers. And so you see volunteers knocking door to door turning a blue state to red state, turning hmm. a red state to blue state in, in the America. Um, you, you see them spending a lot of money on, on souvenirs, on, on flags, on mugs, on, on wristbands, on face caps, on t-shirts, on balloons. Basically you, for basi campaigns. Yeah, for campaigns. They, they, they try to instill who they are yeah, and their the name the people. in the minds of the people. That's what the money is meant for. And even at that, there is a limit to which you can go. There is a limit to which an individual can donate to a candidate. There are checks and balances. Um, well, we have some of those laws in Nigeria, but hmm. we, we never, you know, follow them up. So, so it, it, I mean, money is essential. You can't run for an office without having hmm. some money there. But those monies are not meant to buy votes. They are not meant to induce voters. Once you do that, you're rubbishing our democracy and you're not making democracy the right um, form of governance for people. Now, Mr. Nilolobo, this uh, not too young to run bill, um, the president just uh, signed it into law. Yeah. Now, the youths, maybe, you know, people like you, I don't think you have uh, that volume of cash to display. How do you intend to win elections? Now, we, we need to get our strategies right. Um, not to young to run bill, support a lot of young people like myself okay. to want to run for office. Um, it's not because we have been sleeping before. Right. We have been doing, we have been complaining. We have been ranting on social media. We have been, you know, trying to make our voice heard. But with the rule, we are burdened to, you know, want to test the water, okay. throw our hearts in the ring, and let us see how, what, what, what comes up from this. But having been on the field, we know something good is going to come out of it. The people are tired of the whole order. They are tired of the system that have never worked. 
they are tired of having to complain of not being made to pay for school fees, not having um, um, employment opportunity for their children, not um, having food to eat and all of that. So, but we need money. The kind of money we need are not the kind of money we need to buy votes. They're the kind of money we need to run the campaign. Uh, and so you, you need to, you know, do posters, you need to mm. print posters, you need to print banners, you need to print flyers. You know, if you have um, a, a, a committee of friends that are supporting you, you need to find a way to gather them together, have meetings and, you know, a little bit of refreshment at your yeah. meetings. And so those are the things we need money for. And I tell people, if you can raise money for your wedding, if you can raise money for your birthday, you can raise money to do a few things, then you should be able to raise money to run for an office. So if there are, if you have to run to your uncle to support you with some little amount to run to stage your wedding, then you should be able to run to friends and families and raise some money from them to run for an elective post. So we should not think you need all the money in the world if you get your strategies right. Part of my strategy is we go to the streets. On the evenings, you see me at junctions. I'm talking to uh. people every day. Hello, my name is Ola Rewaju Solomon. I'm running to be a member of Ogun State of As As Assembly. Um, the young people have got to be involved and all of that. I can do that with my energy, with my sweat. Yeah, not with need, your money. I don't need to buy, I don't need to get money and start giving everybody 2000 No. What I need to do is to convince them of my capacity, my competence, and my character. Showing them I am diligent, showing them I'm trustworthy, showing them I'm passionate, showing them I'm resilient. Whatever comes out of it, we are ready because we want to deliver the new Nigeria. A new Nigeria is possible. So, and we have to roll up our sleeves and get to work. Not with a lot of money, but with a lot of energy. Let us know how we talk about this issue without uh, mentioning about uh, Godfatherism. Yeah. Do you have one? No, I don't. Um, I don't believe in Godfatherism. One of the main, uh, uh, one of the things wrong with our democracy is Godfatherism. Um, really, in the sense of it, there is nothing wrong with the word Godfathers. Because mm. um, to, to run for an elective post, you need to have experience, experience yeah. you need to have money, mm. and you need, to, you need a lot of advice from people who are older than you. And that is what mentors who have turned themselves to godfathers should actually provide. They should be able to loan you, give you some money, because they believe in your ability, they believe you have the character, you have the capacity, and you are competent. So they believe in those things, so they are willing to you know, support you. And that's what they should be mentors, leaders, supporters, advisors. But today in Nigerian politics, when they give you those things, they want something back in <laughs> return. So which means when they support you with 10,000 naira, they want um, some, some kind of support in return. Maybe what more than 10,000 naira? Maybe true. when you get to the office, you have to promise them it's, some it's, contract. It's, it's business. Yeah, it's mm. more or less business. Mm. And so, and that is the bane of Godfatherism in our, in our society, in our politics today. We need mentors, we need leaders, we need supporters. We don't need Godfathers. We don't need people that would dictate, a, a few set of people dictate what happens in the party, in the, po in, in, in the society, in the politics generally. And that shouldn't be. That shouldn't be. So when, when you have a Godfather mm. and you get to office, you will see there, are li there is little you can do. Because maybe there's an allocation coming, your godfather knows about it before it gets to you, he rings you up and he says, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah, there's a Because you've taken so much from him, you can't say no. Mm. And so they're telling you, okay, there is a vote coming up in the, in, uh, on the floor of the assembly next week, this is how I want you to vote. No, when you should go to your people, have a town hall meeting and say, I represent you, what would you like me to say? How would you want me to defend you? There's a, and there is a, um, a decision coming up in the House. How would you like me to vote? Vote because your constituent wants you to vote in that manner, not because your godfather commanded you to vote in that manner. And that is why we, so in my party, Alliance for New Nigeria, we are against godfatherism. We are against undue influence of money in politics. We do not go about campaigning and doling out money. We do not go about buying votes or inducing voters. We, we are for new Nigeria. And the Nigeria we see in the future is devoid of those things. How do you have chances to be able to implement what you have for the future Nigeria? Yeah, and that is what most of us don't know. 
If you go on the street and talk to people, people are tired of this system. People even listening to us now know that this system has taken us nowhere. We started this kind of democracy since 1999. Hmm. What has it given us? Hmm. What have we benefited from it? Has our schools been better for it? Our hospitals are they better for it? Our roads are they better for it? Do you have water supply in your house? Is it better for it? Is there pop, is there constant power supply in your house? Is it better for it? Is your 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 standard of living has it been improved? Our life expectancy in Nigeria is it enhanced? So if we are going through a path for the past almost twenty years and this path has not helped us, does it not make sense that we change? So if we have been doing God for the reason, if we have been doing monopolitics and it has not helped us, are we not thinking about changing the status quo and changing the narratives and begin to say, no, we have got to do things differently. We belong to the new breed and this new breed has no greed. We are not greedy and so we want to do things in the right way because we believe in the next 20 years, in the next 30 years, the World Bank said Nigeria's population will be 400 million. How are we going to feed ourselves in the 400 million? How are we going to live? What kind of houses will we live in the 400 million? We want to begin to think about the new Nigeria, the future of this great country. In the next 30 years, as I mentioned, most of these leaders will not be there. It would be my generation to provide direction for this country, and we have to begin to do that now. If we leave them to it, this country will be damaged beyond repair by the time they are gone, and they will leave it for us to begin to grapple with it. And so that is why we need to start now. That is why the change must start now. They said the leader, they said the youth are the leaders of tomorrow. We say tomorrow is now, the future is now, the time is now. We need to begin to exercise this leadership now. When those people got to power, they were in their twenty twos, they were in their twenty nine. Because I, I mean Antonio now removed mm. the motion for Nigeria's independence at the age of twenty nine. Yeah. But what are the twenty nine year olds of this country doing at the moment? We are still in their father's house. We are still looking for a job on the street. And so that has got to change. Okay. Mr. Any Lolobo. We're still going to talk about the youths. And I was going to ask you, are the youths really prepared to pick up this leadership responsibility? But then your response will have to be delayed because right now we're going on a break. When we come back, yes, we start from that Thank point. You. it's still your program point blank on court tv and uh, today we're talking politics basically we are taking a review of the just concluded primaries uh, by the various uh, political parties about 91 registered political parties all of them went on the field and yes we just had it uh, concluded and every one of them now approaching INEC to submit the list of their candidates and today we have one of the candidates representing the alliance for New Nigeria uh, to vie for the office of uh, Honorable Member of the Ogun State House of Assembly come 2019 general election, and that's Mr. Olan Rewaju Solomon, Enilo Lobo. We still have him in the studio, and before we went on that break, we were actually talking about uh, the youths and their involvement in politics. And if uh, well, I'll reflect on what you said before we went on the break, mm -hmm. yes, um, the youths, uh, you want to make a change and give us the Nigeria of our dream in the next, you know, uh, possible, uh, the shortest possible time. And I was going to ask you that, yes, we talk about the youths. We have the bill encouraging the youths uh, to participate actively in politics, the uh, not too young to run bill. Now, are the youths ready? To take up this challenge, this responsibility. Now, wh what do you mean by are the youths ready? Because you would never find 100% of the particular group of people okay. ready for anything okay. at any time. Mm -hmm. We all, even if your classmates, not not all of you would be ready for marriage at the same time. Not possible. None of you will get job at the same not time. So you will find a particular set of people ready at that point in time. And what I'm telling you is. 
a good number of Nigerian youths are ready to take up leadership in this country now, 2019. And so you have them already. People like my age are ready. People younger than us are ready. People in their 20, um, late 20s and mid 20s are ready. And you know what? They are not just ready. They have character. They are competent. They have capacity to deliver. So we are, we are not just um, ready. We are ready to deliver the future of this country. We understand the enormous task ahead of us. We understand that this country, if we do not make drastic changes now, it will be it will be very bad, and we have ourselves to blame for it. Because the next 50 years, 60 years, we are still around. But the leaders that are not doing well at the moment will be gone. And so what kind of country will we inherit from them? What would they bequeath to us? And so that is why we want to start now. Okay. And we are ready if, to answer your question. The youth of this country are ready to lead this country out of the doldrums. Okay, and uh, the only approach you are propagating is um, through the polls. Yes, um, yeah, th that's the, about the only legal <laughs> <laughs> approach now. I wish there are other means we can do this and fast enough. But we, we're talking about a democratic um, um, way of changing government now. So we are talking about how do we change and effect changes through the ballot paper. And so we're not going to take up arms. We're not going to abuse the older ones. What we just want to do is to use our thumb because there is power in this thumb. What we want to use is to use our thumb and vote out the whole order. We want to retire and replace them with new set of political leaders who mean well for this country. And don't you, don't you think the leaders, I mean those that we have continually uh, uh, recycled, mm -hmm. don't you think they should have the conscience, at least that understanding that... These guys are coming up strongly. Why not leave the state for them? Are they ready to leave the state for you guys? No, they are not ready to leave, leave the stage. And come to think of it, nobody will leave the stage for anybody. Power is not served a la carte. It's not served on a platter of oh, gold. gold. You won't sit down in your room and they call, hey, come and get power. It's all yours. Nobody does that. You will fight for it. You show your hunger. You show your seriousness. You show your genuineness of purpose. And people will begin to notice you. Come to think, oh, it says these guys are ready. We had better allow them to take. They won't, they won't let us have peace. So you had better, you know, relinquish this. But if you're relaxed about it, if you're just laid back, nobody's going to serve you power a la carte. And without this political power, we cannot effect most of the changes we want to effect. I mean, this is the 21st century. And all our schools, secondary schools, do not have internet connection. Even sit to even sit down. Many schools don't even have. See, I, w I, I, I went to Jamoto Tri School for four years. I went back to my school. What I made there were, were goats in my class. My class, the class I was about 15 years ago. And so you will see the level of our education now. Is it going up or is it coming down? So that is why we need to act now. And those things, you need some level of political power to be able to effect so many changes, especially in bills, in laws, the education or the, the curriculum we have today are the curriculum that we have ages past. Yeah. If you go to Olabis in Banyo today and you study computer science, they will be teaching you algorithm. When they should, you know, have gone beyond that and be teaching you Java. They will be teaching you, and, you know, and even more recent programs. They will be teaching you archaic ones. And so that is what we have up till today. You cannot change that without having the instrument of power, without being in the legislature and making bills. And that is why the young people of today are ready to do just that, because we know we have to deliver the future of this country. Okay, Mr. Olari Waju Solomon, Enilo Lobo. Let's look at um, party intrigues, the hula balloons, hmm. the breakages, the factions. Do you have such in your own party allows for new Nigeria? Well, in, in Ogun State, there are no factions, really. Um, we are all united. We are all one. Um, in the recent past, in the national, we have um, factions, mm -hmm. but that, 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 that has been taken care of now. We have um, someone who was called Olawe Puashim, who, who was the former national publicity, deputy publicity secretary of a of People's Democratic Party. Okay. And to join the party, thinks money can do everything, mm. try to buy a few members of the party, 
But thank God today is is gone to alliance of people's trust because alliance for new Nigeria has a strong um, constitution and our manifestos are sure. And so we um, those constitutions do not allow you to just do the way you want to do like other parties do. But this constitution is strong. It allows everybody to come in. So far you can play by the rules. The rules that governs new Nigeria. Because we are tired of this old country we are in. And so we have to begin to do things differently. We have to do things in a way that uh, we can be cuited to, um, to our children and our future will be better for it. And so we do not have functions, really. Okay, now. We, we, we are focused on winning the election. Okay. We are no longer aspirants. We are candidates. Candidate and now. we are working towards winning the election. Winning the election is not, is not, is not easy. Mm -hmm. But we have to be on the streets. We have to you know, embrace different kind of strategy to ensure that we, we, we get to the destination. Now, as it happens in many of the political parties, like you have in PDP, mm -hmm. it's factionalized, APC, same. Mm -hmm. um, some other parties like that, many of them have one faction or the other. Mm -hmm. uh, is this uh, development uh, good for our democracy? Well, in, in, in a way you want to look at it, it's good uh, because nobody would have an overpowering or Even dominant when influence. This affected they just concluded their primaries no. where we have uh, the two separate groups of three conducting different uh, primaries let me go to the democrats in the united states of america okay. before their primaries you have the clinton side and you, um, i've forgotten the name of this other guy that contested with um with clinton you know they had factions they had their own groups mm. you know they are separated but once the primary is done everybody supports okay. the candidates that they emerge marriage. You know, you remember Donald Trump running on, it's a rigged system, it's a rigged system, it's a rigged system. He was trying to just discredit them. They can be factions. They can be, okay. once you have two people mm. jostling for one single mm. thing, some people will follow Definitely. one, while some people will follow the, the other. other. But what you should remember is you belong to the same party. And so what once that is over, you support the candidate of your party. You do not go through unlawful means to become the candidate. You do not buy votes and induce delegates to become the candidate. You play, the, you play by the rule of the game. Mm -hmm. And so once you don't play the, by the rule of the game, that is when people feel cheated and they pull out of the party or begin to pull the party apart. apart. And so it, our own type of factions is not good for our democracy. The, the, the type of factions we have when you keep going to the law court keep buying court injunctions, you know, keep um, setting up parallel. Even the, the one that I quoted in the United States of America, you don't have parallel party executives. No. You have factions. People belong to Hillary Clinton mm. or people belong to the other yeah, candidate. Yeah. But not you still that... have a single yeah, executive. But you still have a single executive. There are no parallel conventions. Like I said, you know, when they had a convention, it was the same convention all the party mm. candidates have. Um, so those are the kind of things that are wrong with that. The kind of factionalization we have in our own political party system is dangerous. Mm. It's really, really dangerous. Here in Abi Okuta, they, they were gone short, all because we are doing governorship part primaries within your party, within your whole family. They were going short. There were people that were macheted. Um, in some other states, people were killed. That's not the kind of factions we're talking about. Okay. Now we still hope they will understand themselves and still fuse together. Yeah. But then, we are looking up to the 2019 general election. Yeah. In one word. And trust yes. me, the, the young people will change that. Once we get there, there will be no such um, factionalizations because we're going to come in there with level-headed. All right. I think on that note, we'll be wrapping up this uh, edition of the program okay. Point Blank on Pro TV, where you have actually spoken very, very well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. I've been yeah. hosting the uh, candidate for the Alliance for New Nigeria under the, yes, uh, for Abikuta South Constituency 2. Uh, that's Mr. Solomon Onariwaju Enilo Lubo. Thanks for coming on the show You're today. Welcome, sir. All Thank right. Thank you for having me. Okay. And so that's the size of the package today. Point blank on Quote TV with me, Kola Olaleye. And by next week, yes, hopefully we'll come back again. And uh, we still have it tough, no holds barred on this uh, uh, program. Thanks for being with us and stay good. Bye for now. <laughs>